everybody. I am here with Evan Williams. He's the star, one of the stars of the new Hallmark show, The Way Home. Thank you so much for meeting with us today. My pleasure. Nice to meet you, Amanda. Thanks for having me. Um, I have to say, this show has been a hit with our readers. Um, people are talking about it, all ages, men, women. What do you think makes this show so universally appealing? I think it's, uh, it's just a really great concept, first of all. I think uh, there's so many factors. I've been thinking about this a lot. Uh, when I was reading the scripts in the first place, I was struck by how timely it was. I, like especially when we're coming out of a, a couple of years of real pressure and uh, trauma, we'll say, societally after the pandemic. Uh, the type of show that people can watch together with their families and uh, feel seen on multiple generational levels, I think is really cool. And uh, I also like that there's a, it's this, to me anyway, the perfect balance between uh, being accessible, like there's no, uh, there's nothing that's going to traumatize you in our show. Um, but at the same time, that doesn't mean that we can't have stakes and we can't have uh, compelling story storytelling and uh things that actually can be rewarding to an audience if they pay attention and if they really invest. And that's the kind of show we're making here is one that you, uh, you're you gonna wanna pay attention to. It is very high stakes. Yeah, a lot of cliffhangers. Um, I was uh, reading up on social media and several people have written, Elliot is my hero. Um, he is a very unique character because he's not one of the Landry women, but when the show starts, he knows more about them than they yeah. probably know about each other. Um, what was it like to sort of approach this character so important to the story? Well, I, that was what really attracted me to this role was getting to be uh, the outsider who is trying to make his way to the inside. And he doesn't have an agenda like he, he's not a he's not a Machiavellian character. He's a, a true hearted person and he wants to wants to love and he wants to actualize his life and he wants to help the Landry women. And he. He's been doing that, we see, from the very beginning. So uh, it, it was cool to uh, play a character that I wore multiple different hats. Uh, like with uh, with Kat, Elliot is one kind of way yes. and uh, has has uh, aspirations in that way. And then with Alice, he's another kind of way. And as we certain, as, as, as we come to realize, he's a different way with Dell. Like he, he plays uh, these different roles for these women. And um, I think it's cool to also see Elliot starting to grow and change uh, since he's a guy who, who never really changed for the last you know 20 years since someone told him his future. Mm -hmm. uh, his changing is, is starting with a bang at the beginning of our series. And so we see him uh, really go through a bit of a metamorphosis as well as he, as he kind of tries to figure out for himself what matters to him and, and what he's capable of doing. You know, and that was my next question, actually. I think it's very obvious for a viewer. You're going to see the Landry women change. You know that they're going to change in their perspective and their relationship. And I guess I'm curious. I know there's a lot you can't reveal, but how would you say, like, by the end of the season, how will Elliot have changed? Um, I don't want to give anything away. I think that the, the storyline is too juicy for me to, oh, yeah. to, to, to. So I don't really want to say where Elliot will end up. Okay. But I will say that... Uh, a lot of his notions become challenged about okay. uh, uh, about what he's driving at. And um, yeah, I think that's all I want to say. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Um, another thing that I think is so fun is you sort of share the role with David Webster. Yeah. Um, you play Elliot at one age, he plays Elliot at another age. Were you able to spend some time together to sort of work on, you know, mannerisms or... Things yeah, like well, that. the beginning of our shoot, uh, we were all kind of separated. I, I lived down in LA and he was up in Canada. So uh, we did a little bit of work on Zoom together, which I was really glad about. We, we uh, were able to create some mannerisms and discuss sort of, uh, I, I mean, he's a, he's a theater school kid too, as well as, as well as me. So we have a lot of lingo in common. So we could, we dove into a little bit of that and discovered some, uh, uh, some groundwork that we could use as far as like uh, picking an animal for the character and things okay. like that um, just as a starting point to get the physicality because we had to we had to match off the top without ever having been in the same room as each other so and also we didn't have the benefit of watching each other's work so it was a little bit uh, we laid the groundwork and then sort of 
bid each other good luck. And for the first few weeks, we we were off in our own wow. realities. And it's just a testament to the casting process. Uh, I think that David is a brilliant young actor. And uh, I, I really, really like the the way that it's set up because the the younger characters mm -hmm. everything that they do is attributed to my performance you know like so like like any anything that he does mm -hmm. uh the audience will automatically carry it over to adult elliot so that's really cool because in a way you get to see everything that's the same it's gratifying because you're like oh wow he's he's the same and everything that's different it's gratifying because the audience sees oh he's changed Oh, you know, okay, I think yeah. De Elliot has a Elliot. <laughs> David has a. Oh, it's happening to me. Um, <laughs> it has a, a really sort of bright, uh, uh, shiny sensibility about his Elliot. Uh, he's uh, um, naive about some things and mm -hmm. uh, really earnest. And I think that the way that I naturally approach the character, we see in a way what is the toll on somebody who has been living with it within a prophecy for the last 20 years yes. and whatever they, whatever they do, they always knew that they were going to wind up mm -hmm. in the same spot. Yeah, no, it is very interesting. And yes, he does bring a real sort of openness and this, you know, hopefulness to the character. Um, so one of the things I love about the show, there seems to be a lot of symbolism, you know, the name Alice and, um, through the looking glass and all those things. So I got really excited. I did some research on Elliot and Augustine. And St. Augustine was a patron saint of brewers. So I, I got nothing there. Um, the only thing I could think of was Elliot from E.T. and like <laughs> phone home. Have, you know, were the writers able to share with you any of the ideas behind this? There, there are so many little nuggets that are peppered throughout the script. That was one of the things that really excited about me upon my first reading. And the, the, the writers, I think, as soon as they figured out how not to break their own brains, <laughs> they then had a lot of fun artfully breaking the audience's brains. And, and believe me, there's, a, there's a, a lot of brain breaking coming up too. Okay, good to know, good to yeah. know. Well, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to speak with us. We really appreciate it. And everyone, The Way Home, Sundays on Hallmark Channel. Thank you again, Evan, appreciate it. My pleasure. Okay. Thanks for watching. Thanks.